The Romanian company behind the elite and the Imperian, Meze Audio, with their partner Renaro Isodynamics, have come up with a closed back planar headphone to join their open back flagship headphones to round out the lineup. And today, we have the review of the Meze Audio Lyrique. Let's talk. I would like to extend a massive shout out to Mimic Cables for sending this unit in for review. It's very, very much appreciated, mate. You are a star. Mimic Cables is a dealer in Meze Audio, Focal, Audacy, Benchmark, Deconi, IFI, and I think there's a bunch more these days. Oh, Fostex as well, um, because the list constantly is growing and all of his information will be down below if you are interested in headphones such as these. And send him your love. And um, there is no kickback to the channel. He does not pay me to say anything. He just sends in for things for review and I really do appreciate it. So you pay a very, very, very promising price of $2,000 for these planar closed back headphones, which is pretty damn good price wise for flagship closed back headphones. We are looking at the Verite closed at $2,000. $599 if I'm not mistaken. Uh, we are looking at the Focal Stelia, which is right there for $3,000. And we will be looking at the Abyss Diana TC closed, if they're gonna call it that. That's gonna be around $4,000, I'm pretty sure. So um, price to performance ratio and price wise, this headphone is very, very, very appealing, $2,000. So you pay your money and we get a box like this, which what the hell happened? Ah, it's upside down. <laughs> it's like this. You unbox it like so, removing the outer layer and shell, flipping the box upside down. Let us dispense with the outer casing. Don't hit the microphone. Don't hit the microphone. Don't hit the microphone. Right, so this light outer layer box feels like a cereal box can be moved. Meow. We get this beautiful display case. This is very much in reminiscent of the Sennheiser HD 800S and the thing behind me. What's it called? Um, what are you called? Let's have a look. High Fireman Sasvaras, that's it. That's got a beautiful box with a clasp though. This doesn't have a clasp. So when you're opening the box, please be careful and uh, don't just open it. Here is the design. Beautiful rough material, cardboard, and I think yeah, I smell the top of the box and it's leather. Well, it feels like it. Oh, this is so beautiful. I mean, absolutely beautiful presentation for 2000. The headphone over there, the Fostex 909s, came with a Japanese cardboard box that wasn't really impressive like this, but this is cheaper and it's beautiful. The underside of the lid is foam layered with these strings so that the lid does not flop back. Let's take out the hard shell case and put this aside for now. We get some salt for your chips. This is Romanian salt, so don't eat it, please. And we get a big book to explain all the details. So, okay, book and headphones. Let's remove this out of the way and see what we get. This box is freaking huge. You go here and you go there. Taking the, I think that's leather as well. Sorry, a lot of sniffing today and upside down. Dispensing with the box and the nice book that it comes with. Interesting. Put that there, probably upside down. Um, <laughs> so here we go, we've got a nice leather box, very much akin to this. This is the Focal Stelia. As you can see, they're pretty similar. This feels nicer though, this one's a bit more rougher. This one could probably withstand some water being splashed on it. Uh, it's leather and you can just wipe it off, but this one is canvas. So. If you've got one of those, be careful with it. Yes, I, I just actually noticed the channel, where the hell it's got to. I mean, $5,000 just, just, just sitting there. A moment of silence for the wallets across the world. Anyway, you get the beautiful logo here. And as we open this case, yep. I'm an expensive zipper for a nice flagship headphone. Throwing this back with this beautiful soft velvet interior lining, we get a pouch with cables inside. Let's put that here for now. We can have a look in a second. 
and then we get the beautiful headphones here. We can place this. Let's swap this and let's put this here. Fortunately, these headphones lay flat. The Stelia doesn't. I like headphones that lay flat. And there's another cable in here. Thank you. Let's take that and put that on this side as well. And we will investigate that in a minute. So this case is rather well built. It's very protective. So you can throw this in your suitcase and be very happy. That can go over there, but now we don't actually need it. Um, but it's a very, very, very nice travel case to throw in your rucksack. Taking a look at the cables, we get this TPE soft cable that despite being in the case curled up, keeps a beautiful straight shape. This is what the Sesvara cable I think wanted to be and it just couldn't manage it unfortunately and those are six thousand freaking dollars. Uh, Meze Audio could teach how I find something about cables. I mean look, it's rubbery but it's a soft gentle feel and this is 1.5. This cable is 1.5 meters. Very very nice. So the terminations for this cable is 3.5 at this end and 3.5 at that end. So very, very basic cable to actually replace later on down the road. Let's throw this one over Mia. Then inside this beautiful case, is it leather? It's leather, of course it's leather. Etched with Meze Audio's logo as usual, we get another cable of the same material and core plus a bunch of little things. So, aeroplane adapter. Do people still use these things? Please let me know in the comment section if those things are actually a thing and people still use them. Um, I haven't used those since uh, 2001, so I have no idea. And we also get, uh, obviously this is a 3.5 uh, millimeter cable at both ends and we do get a 3.5 to 6.3 to throw on bigger amplifiers, etc. This cable is three meters. Let's have a look. Is it three meters? Are you three meters? Tell me your three meters. Look, it's keeping its shape despite jankled, roiled, rolled, folded, and it's still keeping this beautiful shape. This is amazing. I absolutely love this cable. Yeah, fantastic. So as we spool the cable like so, it does keep a very straight shape if you untangle these angry bits that are at the moment taking up recording time. So there you go, it works fine. Beautiful. Three meters, so you probably use that at the couch. These are the headphones. Closed back design. Renaro's isodynamic hybrid array. MZ4 driver in this unit, but we will discuss that in the specification section. Let's take a hardware tour. This headphone is very light. It's around 393 grams. Doesn't weigh much. Distribution is absolutely perfect. The headband is made of leather with the Meze Audio etched at the top. And on the underside of the pad here, we have two distinct shapes for the foam underneath. It's like a pair of Vs. A V like this and a V like that. Or two angles like that. So that nothing touches the top of your head in the middle of the headband. There is separation and a channel between pad at the front and pad at the back and also the leather band itself is very wide and it cinches around the skull in a perfect distribution of weight. This is absolutely fantastic. Here is the Focal Stelia $3,000 close back headphone. Another beautiful design. This headband is much wider this is three times as thick, wrapped in this leather, and the softness of the pad underneath is firmer on the Lyrique, softer on the Focal Stelia, but this is more comfortable due to the weight distribution. And I wish you could just flip these cups so that it could lay flat, but unfortunately, that is not a possibility. Okay, headband, five tigers, wonderful. Very, very beautifully designed, very comfortable. As we drop to the cups, the whole frame is made of magnesium, which is very, very light metal, and wrapped in this beautiful leather, accentuates the cups beautifully. These pads are 
Guess leather. Of course they're leather. They're oval, a little bit narrow, as you can see, but very tall. So it depends on how broad your ears are. For me, it's absolutely perfect, covering a circumference around the ears without any part of the pad touching my head. And it's ergonomic, slim fit, and very well designed. The adjustment mechanism is in reminiscent of the Elite and Empyrean. And unfortunately, less attention has been thrown to detail because it's very stiff, very, very, very stiff. Unlike the Elite, which is just beautiful, moves up and down as if it was on water. This side, I can actually feel it catching and it's very stiff. So I don't think they pay as much detail to this one as they did with their elite. I mean, it's half the price, so maybe that's why less time was actually <laughs> applied, but maybe it could just be this unit. But the adjustment mechanism is very, very stiff on this one. Leather, magnesium, beautiful headband, beautiful design, very ergonomic, very comfortable, and it lays flat and the cups rotate 360 degrees around the frame itself. The cups also tilt backwards and forwards like so on a spring mechanism. Excellent. The underside, we have a dual connection via 3.5 entry. And it is a little bit recessed, but it's not that difficult to get cables for. For example, uh, this cable, necklace cable that Viking Weave uh, made for me, Skedra, thank you so much. These go in with absolutely no problem and these adapters are quite big, so it worked very, very well. I use that with my IFI Go Blue, um, which I'll be talking about in the sound section, a lot on the go. And that's a necklace uh, style cable so that it only comes down to about there. These pads are not removable right now. Uh, there is a tool that Meze Audio is planning to release, but at the moment they're not removable. And there is a specific reason for this, which I will get onto momentarily because it's part of the specifications of this headphone. Now, talking of specifications, let's jump in. This headphone is 30 ohms, slightly harder to drive than the Elite and the Empyrean, which is 31.3 at uh, and 32 ohms, uh, prospectively. The sensitivity of this headphone is 100 dB. So it's pretty easy to drive, but it's far more finicky than the Empyrean and Elite. Far more finicky. The driver type in this headphone, Renaro makes a comeback with their isodynamic hybrid array MZ4 driver in this unit. And it's actually smaller than the MZ3 and MZ3 SE in the Elite. The driver surface area is 92 millimeters by 63 millimeters, it's actually smaller obviously than the Empyrean and the Elite. The driver weight is 71 grams, so that is conducive of a very light planar headphone. Most planar drivers are extremely heavy, but the Elite, the Empyrean and now the Lyrique circumvent this due to the driver weight. The casing of the driver is fiberglass polymer and the diaphragm weight is zero. 0.08 grams. Extremely light and quite a big driver size. Not too bad actually. We have some new technologies uh, with this new driver. The Phase X patented design tech has been implemented in this headphone for less distortion in a closed back field so that in a closed back environment sounds do not distort. Also so it can regenerate and represent the 3D holographic imaging that Meze Audio is renowned for. For some reason, some people can't detect this and other people swear by it. I am one of those people because when that spiral part of the driver, which we will get onto in a second, sits over the ear canal, it's absolutely incredible. And with this PhaseX technology, it seems to be utterly outstanding because I did compare it with the Focal Stellius this morning and uh, it was quite jarring, the difference and the mutedness of the Focal Stellius compared to this in regards to imaging and layering. Um, jumping onto the driver itself, this isodynamic hybrid array from Renaro is newly designed for this headphone specifically. We have symmetrically placed neodymium magnets on either side of the driver in a hybrid array formation so that it can activate the driver in a uniform manner. The switchback 
coil up top, we have two voice coils within this driver, deals with the bass region, the way the Imperian and the Elite does. Down here, the spiral part of the driver sits exactly over the ear canal, and so that it delivers sound coherently to the ear canal due to the nature of short waves for treble region without distortion and bad phasing and all that kind of stuff. The reason why we can't take these pads off of the Lyrique yet, and the tool has not been provided, is because there's a channel that goes from the cup all the way through the pad to create an acoustic large chamber. Rather than increasing the cup size to create a larger field for the sound, the way, for example, the Sennheiser HD820 does, or the Verite Close does, they have decided to create something new, which is absolutely freaking incredible. And that is to shrink the cup size at the back, yet channel an airflow mechanism through the cup so that it uses that as a resonant chamber to create a larger audio sound field. The isodynamic hybrid array drivers can drop to 4 hertz all the way up to 93 kilohertz, not on the levels of the Elite, which is 3 and a hundred and something, 112 I believe, which is absolutely insane, um, but 4 hertz to 93 kilohertz, which is fantastic. The sub bass on this headphone is wonderful. The reasoning behind the dual coil mechanism within the isodynamic hybrid array drivers, the switchback up top and the spiral below it, is that Meze audio states above 10 kilohertz, the redistribution and reproduction of the treble region in that category between 10k and above can be lost and become discordant with traditional drivers. By designating and delegating different parts of the frequency response to different coils within the driver surface area. The way we do with loudspeakers, such as the ones behind me, is to provide a more functional and more, a more functional and a more efficient way of reproducing those frequencies. And it's odd. On this, you really can't hear that sort of crossover from the sub bass and bass to the mid range and treble. I distinctly could hear a difference between those two categories in the Meze Audio Elites. And I think that might be down to its tuning rather than the capabilities of the driver itself. Um, I am very, very happy with the tuning of these headphones. Technical jargon, but how does it work? in reality. And that brings us to the overall sound characteristics of the headphone before we break down the frequency response. These closed back headphones are bright. A departure from Meze Audio's Empyrean and Elite. I think this is the crowning jewel of Antonio Meze's team. Half the price of the Elite Two thirds of the price of the Empyrean, yet it has better resolution, better tonal balance, better detail. It does not obviously have the comfort of the Empyrean and Elite, it doesn't have the design of those two headphones, and it does not have the stage of those two headphones, but for tonal balance, for detail retrieval, I think it's better. The sound is transparent, clean, with a few minor caveats, which we will get onto in the caveat section, because it's not all honeys and bunnies and uh, little bears. Um, there are some problems. This headphone is very, very amplifier specific and dependent. It's very much dependent on the impedance of the output of the amplifiers, as I have found out because of the hypsos and the or, the firm stack behind me where you can adjust the voltage and the wrong kind of voltage on the output does alleviate or expand on the treble region a little bit and really does mess about with the frequency response, unfortunately. That includes the IFI Go Blue right now. But the sound you get is very much in reminiscent of the HD800S tonal balance. The 
LCD XC tonal balance and nothing like the Empyrean and the Elite. You got superb bass response in the sub bass and in the mid bass. You got fantastic presence of the upper bass region without it encroaching on the lower mid range, mid mid range, and it's a little bit more balanced. Definitely, it's a better headphone. So with that, let's break down the frequency response. The sub bass region of this headphone is elevated. There is a shelf there um, and it is boosted, yet it's got perfect rumble, good texture, and yet you get no bad resonances in the cup. And I think that's due to the port that's been put on the cup to alleviate pressure because there is no resonance pressure inside the cups. It feels very airy and it feels very, very, very relaxed and transparent in the sub bass category without that rumble, you, though you do feel it, your eardrums does feel it without it actually causing resonances and making your eardrums tingle in a bad way. The P9 signatures were notorious for that. Sub bass, elevated, no need to touch it with EQ. It's, it's present, it's got good rumble, it's got good texture, it's got good placement within the stage. Uh, not as clearly defined as an elite where the sub bass does go pinpoint within the stage itself and you know exactly where it is. It does feel like a little more the whole driver is making the sub bass rather than a specific area of the driver. So, but it's excellent definition. I don't need to touch this in any way, shape or form. Climbing up to the mid bass region, it's very punchy, it's elevated. You've got another shelf there again, uh, between 120 hertz uh, up to about 200 hertz. There is definitely elevation there, yet it's not bloomy or bloated. It's actually got fantastic definition. Um, good punch, good attack, and working in unity with the sub bass, which is very, very much fantastic. Climbing up to the upper bass region, it's well technically detailed, it's well textured, and it actually does lead nice credence to the treble region and when tom-toms and other instruments attack um, without it sounding thin or overly airy, superb, but it doesn't encroach on the lower mid-range of the frequency response. The lower mid-range of the frequency response, which we have apparently now jumped to, is very, very well defined, very well textured and vocals does have wonderful presence. It's a little forward. The mid-range is forward on this and it's focused on this. I do actually love the mid-mids and the lower mids, especially with guitars, electric guitars, cellos, and wood instruments. It sounds absolutely fantastic. But vocals does have a presence. All instruments have a distinct presence that is distinctly meze audio where everything is holographic it pops in the air you can reach out as if you can grab it it's absolutely fantastic but there is a peak in the 1 to 2k region by a few db and if your track is badly mastered unfortunately you will find a bit of nasaliness, a bit of honkiness um, and it's not on every track or every genre but on this headphone, you will go, oh, nice track. Oh God, awful track. Nice track, skip, skip, skip. Oh my God, how is it doing this? Oh God, how the hell is it doing this? Bad, 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 bad. Skip, 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 skip. It's that kind of headphone. It's not really put on your head and hope for the best and play every genre. Unfortunately, the source does play a big role. Climbing up to the upper mid range is where we will get some problems for some listeners, myself included. It's forward. The lower treble and the upper mid range is forward. Uh, it's smooth. It's not overly shouty, but it is overly present. So for badly mastered tracks and for specific genres like pop, you can get a bad experience with certain tracks, unfortunately. Um, this is why some reviewers have stated that this is a bit honky and a bit shouty, and it is true. But not for every genre and not for every music, and definitely, definitely not on every amplifier. It really does depend. We will jump on to which amps it should be paired with in the amp pairing section, um, but let us climb up to the treble region. 
lower treble and the mid treble is very present, very well defined with a lot of detail, a hell of a lot of detail. Climbing up to the upper treble region is very airy. Some people might say overly airy um, and they might find it a bit fatiguing. But like I stated, it does depend on the genre of music and what type of music you're listening to. These were specifically tuned for a, a ballad type from Romania themselves. This is for their own music um, and it even states it on their website that the love of this headphone came from that genre of music from Romania and actually does focus on those specific areas so that you find this this uh, headphone really does play hit and miss with vocals. Some vocals sound absolutely astonishing, present and vibrant on it and others sound a bit sibilant. Um, the best way to test sibilance on a headphone is to drop to about 35 dB, 40 dB uh, sound pressure level. And if that track is still going hot, sizzly sounds and ch and like it just still sounds not really real, you know it's actually the driver and not just because you're pushing the headphones too hard and the amplifier can't handle it. And unfortunately for some tracks, I did find that even when dropping the volume to about 40 dB or so, uh, those presence of the s, t, ch really did pop out. So it's definitely part of the driver and the tuning. Same issue with the HD800S, unfortunately. There is a peak in the 5.5 to 6K region as well. It's elevated. So when you are increasing the mid range in the 1 to 2K, and in the 6K of the treble region, you are dicing with fire. Because there will be some genres that will be absolutely outstanding, that will be vivid, that will be present, that will show wonderful resolution and detail. But for other genres, it will be just way too much. And that comes down to the mastering and that comes down to the way the tracks were recorded, etc. So I am grateful that Meze Audio decided to go with this tuning because it's a departure from old traditions and it's a bit more risky and it's a bit more fun and it's a bit more lively and it's got more life and you are not bored putting a $4,000 headphone on your head. I love these headphones. I have loved spending time with these headphones. I have put 50 hours on these minimum. And since I've had those here, I've not really used the Stellias as much as I have Lyric, even though I mean, they're here for review. I've already reviewed that, but still my hand reaches for these. Their comfort is amazing. The sound is very, very good, but if you've got problem with those two specific areas I mentioned, be careful because the genres of music um, is very, very much dependent. So that brings us to genres of music and what sounds amazing on this. First of all, these are a EDM killer. Infected Mushroom, Monster Cat, Prodigy, etc. Those kinds of genres of music is absolutely fantastic because the imaging you get from this is the Meze Audio legendary imaging, which is some of the best in the industry. And I can only count on one hand, cutting a few fingers, some other headphones that can match that. That's the Unique Melody Mest, the Sazvara. That imaging comes not only left to right, forward and back and up and down, but it comes laterally across the stage. Not only this, but when you're a third of the way into the stage, there is so much space around each image that it can rotate and do a U-turn within this small space of area while all the other instruments around it still say in placement. The placement of the track, the way the track has been layered is brought to life. It actually makes other headphones sound dull and lifeless. Going from this to the incredible Stellias makes the Stellias feel lifeless. The imaging pops so much. Every nuance of the track is highlighted and present. Presence is a thing with this headphone within the stage itself. And it's not very big. The stage is quite small. I would say it's the same size as Utopia, if you've heard that. Um, it's not overly wide like the Empyrean and the Elite. Those are absolutely freaking enormous and match the HD800S for size, but it's laser etched, pinpoint accurate, and everything never gets convoluted. The equipment I used for this Lyric has been the Mojo 2 from Chord, some of the best portable setups I've heard with this, 
absolutely outstanding, especially when you use a cross feed and you touch the EQ a little bit, bring the treble down a little bit by one dB. Oh my, that is an absolutely wonderful system together. The next one is obviously the Chord TT2 and the M Scaler behind me. Excellent presentation. Another wonderful setup. It seems to work really well with Chord products and that I use the warm filter and crossfeed too. And it's just mesmerizing. These scale up tremendously with equipment, yet they're easy to drive on things like this. IFI Go Blue. The experience on this, unfortunately, was not too great for all genres because like I stated, for pop genres, it's a bit sibilant at times and it depends on the track and it, but for things like two cellos, uh, cello music basically, and uh, film tracks, film scores and things like that. It's, it's wonderful, well-defined, well-structured, nice tonal balance. I think the problem with these headphones is vocals, to be honest with you, more than instruments. Instruments sound divine. Vocals, when they sound good, they sound spectacularly good, but um, when they sound bad, they don't sound pleasant at all. It's like the HD800S. It's, you have to play fiddle with amplifiers and DACs. The third system I used it with, uh, Third or fourth, I think we're on the fourth now, is the Aw and Hypsos from Firm and uh, the Benchmark DAC3. I had to adjust the voltage on that amplifier from 24, which is baseline. I tried 25, but I had to drop it to about 22.5 to get the best sound out of this so that it tames the treble region a little bit and it's a little bit smoother delivery. But make no mistake, this is a flagship headphone. It rivals in a lot of areas, the Verite Closed. A wonderful headphone with a lot of caveats. So let's talk about the caveats. Well, the caveats being, it's very, very amplifier and DAC picky. Uh, you can't just throw it on anything and hope for the best. Uh, it's very genre specific. You can't throw pop on there. You can't throw hip hop on there that's badly mastered. You're gonna know about it and you're not gonna have a good experience. If you're treble sensitive in the uh, lower treble region, depending on the genre of music you're listening to, this could be problematic for you. So the caveat does come down to this, is what genres of music are you listening to and what equipment are you using? Because otherwise these are incredible. At the desk and on, and on the go. I mean, they're easy to drive. You just need the right amount of power for it. So that brings us to the conclusion. I think these are a very strong contender in the closed back market. A lot of the closed backs we have reviewed are not really portable, such as the uh, XC from Odyssey, the LCD XC, and the Verite Closed, obviously. Those are definitely not outdoor headphones. Please don't take those out. First of all, they might get damaged. Second of all, they're freaking huge. So don't do that. These Stelios here, these are a outdoor, all around headphone, which is wonderful. So are these. These are contender for those. I don't know of any other ones that might be in the same category of performance, looks, and drivability. These, Emotiques, these are a contender, I suppose, for closed back on the go. Oh, they're really beautiful and they're so freaking, they don't weigh anything. But of course, they don't match these true flagship closed back headphones. And these are planar as well. That is something you can't forget that the Focal is dynamic, but these are a planar. Let's give our scores. Build quality, four Tigers. I mean, I would have given it five, but uh, uh, that, that, that was not too pleasant. Yoink. This one's a little bit smoother. They're not the elite levels of five Tigers, so I can't give it five. Four Tigers. Comfort, four Tigers. These are far more comfortable than the Focal Stelia. They just are. Accessories, presentation, five tigers. Price point, four tigers. This is incredible, it's at $2,000. Sound quality, four solid tigers for this. There is some deviation in the treble region and in the mid range, but for the right audience and for the right genres of music, it's absolutely spectacular. That imaging is just mind-blowingly good. Overall, Meze Audio, four solid tigers for this headphone. Well done. Thank you for being a little bit brave. Thank you for stepping away from the Empyrean and Elite tuning and trying something a little bit more towards the audio file rather than 
something that just works for everything. I think being a little bit risky sometimes works and this does. I love these. These are mine, I will be keeping these. I don't think these are going anywhere. With that, I would like to extend another thank you to Mimic Cables for sending these in for review. And I'll be purchasing it off of him because the channel requires something like this and I think I'm letting the Stellius go and putting that money towards something else for you guys for review. Time for some e-begging. <laughs> I do beg your pardon and I hope you allow me a minute of your time. When you join our Patreon, all of the donation goes towards our editor and our new camera person who's going to be doing the B-roll. Unfortunately, my sister is no longer here in the UK. She has moved abroad to teach. So I am in need of an actual professional camera person to do the B-roll. And that costs a lot of money and the editor costs money. And the running of the channel has been out of pocket, obviously. Um, so every penny from the Patreon goes into the videos. It does not go into my pocket. And for that, I give you early reviews, access to the private Telegram chat and to myself, whether you have questions, system builds, etc. And if you feel you would like to support the channel, all the information will be down below. If not, and if you're not in a position to, which I completely understand, you watching the videos, you sharing the videos, liking the videos and subscribing is all that I require from you. Thank you so much for the support. We are nearly coming up to one year anniversary and we have done so much on this channel already. Thanks to you guys. The support has been so generous. Thank you so much. I really do appreciate it. I will see you next time. I am Koji CEO. Peace.